Welcome again. In this session, we're going to be reading the last part of Luke chapter 11. That's verses 37 to 54. We're going to be talking about what Jesus said about the Pharisees and experts in the law. Okay? Keep in mind, this is not all the Pharisees, but the Pharisees in general. Because we know there are there were some good Pharisees. We got people like Nicodemus, who was considered to be a ruler or you know possibly a Pharisee. We got... Paul the Apostle himself that wrote most of the New Testament, he himself said over and over again in the book of Acts and in Philippians, he said, I am a Pharisee. He didn't say I was and I changed or I, I, I came out of that. No, he said, I am a Pharisee. Okay? Keep in mind, a lot of people like to completely diss and completely condemn all Pharisees. That's not what Jesus actually did. He's talking about, in general, generally speaking, the Pharisees. When he, talk, when he talks about you Pharisees, this and that and everything else, uh, he's talking about in general. It's the same way as when, I'm, when I talk about the church. The church, I say a lot of stuff about the church. I'm not talking about everybody, you know, involved in the church. I'm not talking about every single person, 100%. I'm talking about the church in general because there are few, although be it very few, good people in the church, people that really know what, you know, really know what they're talking about, the, you know, the real deal. Um, but when I say the church, again, I'm not talking about uh, every single person, like 100 out of 100. I'm talking about maybe 99 out of 100, but, you know, um, not everybody. In the same way, that's what Jesus is talking about when it comes to the Pharisees and experts in the law. Now, this is called the woes on the Pharisees and expert in, experts in the law. What does, that, what does that mean, woes? Woes. Well, woe is the opposite of blessing. I know a lot of you think that Jesus just went around blessing everybody. He was just so nice to everybody, so nice and kind to everybody. Listen, most of the church, again, we're talking about church, most of the church, believes in a, in a Jesus that's nothing but a fairy tale. I mean, because the real Jesus condemned individuals, condemned, cursed individuals, groups of people, complete, com complete groups of people, entire cities. Okay? He condemned entire cities. He cursed entire cities. Wow. That's not to mention that he called... A woman, a dog. <laughs> I mean, he called people sons of Satan. You are children of the devil. You are children of hell. On and on and on it goes. Okay, that's the real Jesus. Yeah, I mean, we're talking about the real Jesus who cleaned out the temple. This is the meek and mild Jesus that just went around hugging and loving everybody, right? No. He made a whip, it says. A whip. Okay? There's aggression there. There's some kind of violence there. But that's the way it's said. That's what Jesus, that's what it says in the scriptures, okay? Let's read about it. Verse 37, and now as he spoke, that's Jesus, a certain Pharisee asked him to dine with him. Very interesting. A Pharisee, you think that Pharisees are just completely, um, enemies, just complete enemies of, of Jesus, that Pharisees would not want nothing to do with Jesus, and Jesus would, would, not nothing, would, would want nothing to do with Pharisees, okay? But a Pharisee asked Jesus, say, well, come on over to my place, and we'll have supper together. Hey! So, once again, not all Pharisees are completely enemies of God in that sense, okay? Now, it says here in the last half of verse 30, uh, 37, he went in and sat at the table. So Jesus actually accepted the invitation from the Pharisee and went to the Pharisee's house and sat at the table to eat. So he dined with the Pharisee. I know a lot of you would think that Jesus would say, oh no, I don't want nothing to do with Pharisees. You're all hypocrites. You're yada, yada, yada. No. Uh, some people even believe, and this is one of the points they use, they believe that Jesus himself was a Pharisee. Okay. Again, just like how I consider myself to be part of the church, the true church, the real church of God. I mean, as in likened to first century, first century church. But 
I'm I'm quite opposed to much of the mainstream church, if you know what I mean. Verse 38, when the Pharisee saw it, he marveled that he, he had not first washed himself before dinner. Aren't you supposed to wash your hands before dinner, Lord? What's going on here? The Lord said to him, now you Pharisees cleanse the outside of the cup and the platter, but your inward part is full of extortion and wickedness. How many people are like that, do you know, today? They like to wash their hands so much. But inside of them is full of wickedness. They're more concerned about washing a little bit of earth off their hands than they are cleansing their, their spirit and their soul and their mind from the filth that they have in them. The filth, the evil, the wickedness that they have in them. You see where Jesus is going with this? Verse 40. You foolish ones. <laughs> nah. <laughs> I, I, I got to say I like this because here Jesus is in another person's home. He's a guest in a Pharisee's home. The Pharisee invited him in. He accepted the invitation. He's sitting there. He's supposed to be a guest, a nice, nice guest. And then all of a sudden he starts calling them fools <laughs> or foolish ones at least. You foolish ones, didn't he who make the outside make the inside also? But the but give for gifts to the needy those things which are which are within, and behold, all things will be clean to you. Again, now this is a concept that we see uh, spoken of a lot in especially the apocrypha concept of giving to the needy. Actually. God honors that so much that you that a lot of sins that you have in you can be overlooked if you have a lot of mercy toward people. Mercy in, as in giving and and uh, and pouring out your heart and your life to people. Again, let's read this again one more time. Verse forty-one. But give for gifts to the needy. Those things which are within. And behold, all things will be clean to you. But woe to you Pharisees. Uh-oh, here he goes. He's going right on now. Now he's speaking curses upon the Pharisees, one of which is the owner of the home that he's in right now. And he's a guest of the home of a Pharisee. Now he's calling curses upon the Pharisees. Woe to you Pharisees, for you tithe mint and rue and every herb, but you bypass the justice justice and God's love. Okay, justice meaning doing what's just and right. Doing what's right in God's sight. Righteousness, doing what is right. Being good to other people. And, of course, obeying God, obeying God above all. You ought to have done these and have not left the other undone. Verse 40, 43 Woe to you, Pharisees. Again, another, another curse there. Woe to you, Pharisees, for you love the best seats in the synagogues and greetings in the marketplaces. You like to have the best. You, like, you want to have the best seat. You want to be acknowledged. You want to be known and, and, and you want to be seen for someone who's important and you like to be greeted. You like to have attention by men. Verse 44. Woe to you, scribes. And now he's at, now he's adding scribes to it because you, know, you got to understand scribes were like Bible publishers back in those days. They were the ones that actually wrote, copied the scripture from scroll to scroll. They were the ones that actually were responsible for passing down the written scriptures from generation to generation. They're the ones that copied it. The scribes, they're like Bible publishers, right? Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. Now, he again, you got to realize he spoke against the scribes. But you see, in those days, and even today, you think that the, one of the most holy people in the world would be those who actually are very much involved in the scriptures, especially the scribes would be more involved in, in, in knowing the scriptures than Bible publishers are today. Bible publishers today would just basically just be 
just copying, you know, copying page to page, whereas the scribes had to basically copy every single letter, uh, piece by uh, letter by letter. Uh, and uh, they would, if anybody would know the word of God, it would be, it should be the scribes because they would, they, they're the ones that actually wrote it down. Okay. If anybody that would, would have, uh, would know, um, uh, would be uh, memorizing the scripture, it would be the scribes because they're, the, they're the ones that actually wrote it down. For you are like hidden graves and men who walk over them don't know it. Okay. Because you are, you may look beautiful on the outside. You may look like just a, you know, a lush field of grass. But uh, really, you are full of death and wickedness, okay? You are full of death and wickedness. You're full of rottenness, okay? Just like hidden graves. In other words, just like, just like graves that are hidden are you know, hiding the death and rottenness, hiding death, so the scribes and Pharisees, generally speaking, would hide the sin and death and wickedness uh, in their hearts. One of the lawyers asked him, Teacher, in saying this, you, uh, you insult us also. Oh, oh, the, uh, the lawyers, which back then were actually the ones who were the teachers of the law or the experts in the law, talking about really especially the law of God or the Torah, not, not like lawyers are today in other, you know, in, 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 other, in nations, uh, being experts in the law of the land. But the, these lawyers were experts in the Torah of God, okay? So one of the Torahs, uh, excuse me, one of the lawyers answered him, uh, teacher or rabbi, uh, in saying this, you insult us also. So what did Jesus say? Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to insult you. You know, I, 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 I'm sorry. I should be a lot more kind and a lot more loving to you guys. You know, because I am love. God is love. And, you know, we're supposed to love one another. What did Jesus say? His response, verse 46. Woe to you, lawyers also. Curses on you too. <gasps> what? <laughs> it's like Jesus is like he did not. He wasn't apologetic one bit. Not one bit. This is the Jesus that a, lot, that a lot of people believe is so nice that he just overlooks everybody's sin. No, he doesn't. No, he doesn't. Woe to you, lawyers also, for you load men with burdens that are difficult to carry, and you yourselves won't even lift a finger to, to help carry those burdens. What's Jesus talking about here? Well, you see, these experts in the Torah they make they would teach the Torah in a way that it, it, it makes it more difficult than what God actually intended it to be. Again, I like to say this, you know, um, the Torah in many Jewish minds is the five, you know, basically is uh, the five books of Moses, you know, um, Genesis, uh, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. And at the end, relatively around the end of the Torah, Deuteronomy chapter 30, God said very clearly, like after all of the laws and, and all of the, the instructions and all of the commandments came down and all those 613 commandments came down, basically, uh, you know, around the end there, G, um, excuse me, God said, uh, this is not hard for you. This is not hard for you to do. It's actually easy. It's like the kingdom of heaven is near. The kingdom of God is near to come in under his rule and reign and under, under his law. It's, it's easy. Okay. He said, you don't have to climb up to heaven. You don't have to, you know, you don't have to go into another galaxy to get it. You don't have to dig down to the core of the earth to get it. No, it's right near you, right in your heart and in your mouth. You know, as, as Paul said, the word of faith, which I preach, which he was quoting from Deuteronomy chapter 30. Okay. That when Paul said it's not by works but by faith, he was quoting from Deuteronomy chapter 30. It's it's part of the law, it's part of the Torah, what he was teaching. Okay? So many Christians are just so so misinformed. Ill-informed, misinformed about what that mean what Paul was actually talking about. And again, we're gonna get to that. So uh stick in there, stay in there, because we're gonna get to Paul's letters and we're gonna talk a lot about them. So what happened was these lawyers, these experts in the law, they would make the Torah, the law of God, harder than what God really wanted it to be. 
okay? They would add things to it. They would make it more strict than God really wanted it to be, okay? God wants you to be stri- wants you to be strict with it. Of course, it says that he wants you to tremble at his word. But what men love to do, you know, it's just a natural evil inclination in 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 humans is is just to lord it over people, make extra rules, you know, make extra policies, you know, just kind of do things to make things just to make it harder for somebody or lord it over somebody. Make you know, make extra laws, extra rules. That's not what God wants, okay? That's not what God wants. That's not the heart of God. He wants you, yes, to obey and listen to and obey and tremble at his word and his commands. Yes, no doubt about it, you know, but not add to it, not add burdens to it. And that's what these people were doing. Verse 47, woe to you, for you build the tombs of the prophets and your fathers killed them. Wow, that's a quite a statement there. So you testify and consent to the works of your fathers, for they killed them and and you build their tombs. Therefore, also the wisdom of God said, I will send to them prophets and apostles, and some of them they will kill and persecute, that the blood of all the prophets which was shed from the foundation of the world may, may be required of this generation. From the blood of Abel to the blood of Zechariah, or Zechariah, who perish between the altar and the sanctuary. Yes, I tell you, it will be required of this generation. Woe to you, lawyers, for you took the, you took away the key of knowledge. You didn't enter in yourselves, and those who were entering in, you hindered. See, Jesus is very, very interested in getting the knowledge of God out in the world. Yes, that's what this whole thing is all about. Getting into the scriptures. Teaching the word of God, teaching the knowledge of God. Jesus went to the, the extent of telling parables to try to get people to understand the ways of God and, 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 to, and to be educated in the knowledge of God. He said to his disciples, parables are not for you because you already know the mysteries. You, you're, you're close enough to God to know these things. But I tell these parables to those who are not uh, so close and that, are, that don't have the eyes to see and the ears to hear. I tell these parables so that they would be able to see and they would be able to hear and understand so that they would have the knowledge. Okay, You see, the, the heart of Jesus is for them to have knowledge, the knowledge of the, the Word of God, the will of God, the laws of God, and to follow in it. Again, verse 52, Woe to you, lawyers, for you took away the key of knowledge. It's not God's will for you to hide the Word of God from other people. It's not God's will for you to keep it secret. It's God's will for you to preach it. As Jesus said, again, you entered, you didn't enter in yourselves and those who were entering in, you hindered them. Verse 53, and he said these things to them, as he said these things to him, to them, the scribes and the Pharisees began to ter- to be terribly angry that's what happens to people when you rebuke them. They get terribly angry. Well, welcome to the club. I mean, that's the way Jesus was. That's the way Jesus was. A lot of people would say to some of these street preachers today or some of these people that go out and, and, and expose sin and tell people to repent of their sin. Oh, that's not God. That's not the will of God. You're not showing the love of Jesus. Oh, yeah? You know how much love of Jesus that we read about just now? He had, he just cursed how many people? He spoke many, many cursings upon people. And and, and he exposed their sin and and their hypocrisy and their wickedness and their evil. Remember, Remember in the book of John, Jesus said, the world hates me because I testify that its deeds are evil. You're supposed to take that as an example. Jesus is supposed is supposed to be your example in how to live, how to preach, how to do anything. Um, that's your example. Your example preached so hard to people and condemned them and called cursings on them so much that it says that they began to be terribly angry. And, and that's just common with Jesus. Most of the time when Jesus spoke, he made people angry. How about your pastor? How about your priest? Do, does he make people angry? The way Jesus did? Does he preach the way Jesus did? If he doesn't, 
He needs to repent. He needs to start doing it the right way. So they began to be terribly angry and to draw many things out of him, lying in wait for him. That's the way some people are. They're, they just lie in wait for people just ready to catch them on something. Seeking to catch him in something he might say. Okay? You know, we know eventually they got a hold of Judas and they got Judas to rat him off, right? So they were always looking, laying in wait for him, seeking to catch him in something that he might say that they might accuse him. Looking to accuse, looking for something to accuse him. Remember Jesus said, you shall love one another. If you love one another, you wouldn't be looking for someone for, for reasons, for just ways to accuse people. Don't be a Judas. Be a Jesus. Preach the truth. Now, I want you to think about this as you go. Think about how Jesus really was. He just wasn't just blessing everybody, hugging everybody, blowing kisses and giving everybody hugs. Not. Not. He was speaking the truth. He was confronting sin, hypocrisy at every side. He was pronouncing curses, woes upon those to whom, it, who deserved it. That was Jesus. That is the Jesus of the Bible, the real Jesus. Let's take that as, as our example. You know, Jesus said, what I do, you can do also, and much more. He didn't say, well, it's only me that can do this. He never, ever said that. Don't, I mean, that's a lie. Don't believe it. So as you go, may you be blessed as God shows you and helps you to digest what we've just been talking about. You know, may God just help you digest that. Don't let the enemy come in as a bird and snatch that, that seed from your heart. You know, in the, in the parable of the sower. Think about what we talked about. And may God enlighten the eyes of your heart, give you great wisdom and understanding in the ways of the scriptures. He said, call unto me and I will show you great and mighty things. So may God show you great and mighty things as you go your way. And as you go your way, always think about his scriptures. Always think about the scriptures of God. Always keep him before your, your face, so to speak. Keep him in your mind. Keep the word of God always before you. In the name of Jesus, be blessed. Thanks again.